So, welcome. Today, I'm going to tell a little story, and I'm going to throw some pottery. So, as we get started, I'll get this started, and then I'll kind of tell you what's going on. It is a beautiful summer afternoon. It's quite warm and a little smoky. I would sure like it if it were raining instead of hot, but you know, you live with what you have. So I think I'm just gonna throw a little bottle or something out of this. So, um, early in my career, I was in the, the call center management business. And I would manage call centers uh, doing different things, usually doing like technical support, which is something that I really enjoyed. And um, at one point, we were doing some business with India. So I found myself traveling to India quite a bit. So I traveled to India for about a year and a half. I traveled back and forth and just loved it. Loved the people, loved the food culture, I loved everything about it. And then I took a job with a company in India. And I lived in India with my wife and my two youngest daughters. We lived in Hyderabad. So first we were in Delhi, and then we were in Hyderabad. And really liked Hyderabad. And it was a different experience living there with family and not just traveling back and forth but actually living there and making friends and going to the park and having a lot more cultural experiences than just hotel living experiences. Again, it was wonderful. And uh, then, on the, then after that finished, then I was traveling back and forth again um, to Bangalore, Bangalore, it's called now. I can say that well. Bengaluru, however it's pronounced. Um, and I was again traveling back and forth and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed that city. I made some friends. And one of the things that I enjoyed was I took up the game of squash. They, they don't have racquetball, but they do have squash. And so I thought, well, Squash can't be that hard, so I started taking it up, and it was hard, and it's a difficult game, and I never did get super great at it. <laughs> and I had a friend in Bangalore, and we would go play. So there were a couple of ways. So I found that like when I got into a routine, I was working nights, which was great. Work all night, sleep all day. And then uh, work in U.S. hours, and so I would uh, I would go in to work at about um, six in the evening, and we'd work all night, and then about four I would go with one of the guys at work. We would go guys and girls at work. We, they, had a, they had a squash court in the, the building complex that I was at. So we would go and play squash. And the young guy that I would go play with, what was his name? Now I can't remember, 
Lord's name. It's been too long. It wasn't Sandeep. Dang it, I can't remember. Anyway, we would we would play together, and he had never played before, but he was very young and athletic, and really enjoyed playing. But I was taller and a little bit stronger and a little bit more used to swinging rackets. And so I was a little bit better than he was. But he was getting good. He was starting to get good and eventually got to the point where he could, he could compete and we could have good games together. But I started doing a little thing where on point number seven, I would serve it as hard as I could hit it. I would just pound it. And he could never get it, right? Well, sometimes he would. Once in a while, he would get it. And but sometimes I would just hit it just super hard, and it was always really hard to get every time. But I would only do it that once, because I didn't want to beat him every point and serve it super hard every point. But on that one, I just let it loose and let him have it. It was great. And... Uh, And one day, I, and so he started, he started hitting the ball harder. And but one of the things about squash is that just because you hit it hard doesn't mean you're hitting it well. Because um, sometimes in squash you want to hit it soft, so it just goes right up to the very front wall. It makes it really hard to get if you hit it really soft. So there's a balance in racquetball. Most of the time you're hitting it pretty hard and you're hitting it as hard as you can most of the time. But in squash it's a little different. So I tried to tell him, I said, harder isn't always better. And he wasn't getting, wasn't getting my point. And so while we were playing, we came up to point number seven, where I always just pounded it. And this time, I just hit it super soft, just barely, just a soft, delicate, but well-placed shot. And he just could not even handle it. And so I stopped playing a little bit and pointed it out to him. I said, you know, you see what happened? Harder was not better, softer was better and then he started to then he started to understand what I was talking about he started to get it and so I think about that and use that oops oh my gosh I'm not concentrating on what I'm doing here what's happened is I'm touching this top part with my arm and there's it's not wet, so I'm making the clay go crazy. Anyway, the clay isn't the important thing. The important thing is this message anyway. So the message I got him was, harder isn't better. It's to, it's to think about it. It's to think about what you're doing and be strategic. It's like saying, if I work harder, I'll get ahead. Well, how many people do you know that work super hard and never get ahead financially? And if they were smarter, perhaps going back to school is the best thing for them to do. Or changing jobs or doing something different, right? Harder isn't always the right move. One of the, one of the stories of, uh, that I, particularly like in a book by Price Pritchett talks about he's in his office thinking and he observes a fly in the window sill stuck trying to get out and buzzing and buzzing and buzzing and trying to get out and just a few feet away is an open door and if that fly knew enough to fly a few feet easily. Easy flight. Just to fly you over there just a couple of feet without banging into anything. 
he would be out. But he was doomed to try harder. And fly and fly and fly, bang against that window, and he was going to finish his life not knowing that his freedom was only a few easy minutes, seconds away. So when I think about those lessons, I think about um, and what they mean really to me. I think it's just to make sure that you have the proper perspective and that you are humble enough to admit that you might not know it all. That you might not have all the answers. That there might be something different to try. That there might be a way, a better way. Pottery is certainly one of those areas where harder isn't better, isn't always better. When you're centering, yes, you use a lot of pressure and you push really hard. But that's all. Then you stop. And now the rest of it is gentle, careful, and patient. rush this bottle part, if I push too hard too fast, it would, the clay would just collapse. But if I take my time and work this out slowly, and work it in slowly, I can make the clay do things that it wouldn't ordinarily be able to do if I were working hard and fast and pushing it fast. Stop, use the rib on it, So as you're going throughout your busy life, think about areas where you may need to remember that harder isn't better. It's not always better. It's not to say that hard work isn't good. Hard work's great, but smarter, not harder. your conversations when you have something important to convey. Louder, speaking louder, isn't always better. If you have something important to say to somebody, you want to give them some feedback or some criticism, it's a good time to speak softly. Harder is definitely, harder and louder is definitely not the way to go. So you've got a teenager that's driving you crazy. Use a soft voice. You can still have hard conversations, but you can do them I think the 
this problem. That's where I want it to be. I'll work on this curve just for a second. straightened it up. Now I want to curve it down again. So that's my thought today. Work smart, not necessarily hard. Harder isn't always better. Seek for greater perspective. You know, try not to make big mistakes. And if you make little mistakes, that's just part of it, you know. You make mistakes, life is kind of a, it's like driving a car, isn't, isn't fixing a position and staying in one position. It's a series of adjustments, right? When you're driving, it's a series of adjusting little mistakes, right? I was thinking about that the other day when my mom taught me to drive. She didn't tell me that. I'm on the freeway and wondering why I can't stay in my lane and why I keep drifting. It's because I was so firm, right? I was trying to be hard and I just needed to Make little adjustments. Lots of them. Lots of little adjustments. Anyway, that's my thoughts for today. Oh, look at that. A perfect addition to my bot. <laughs> Whatever that is. Where did that come from? Oh, it's a leaf that flew in from outside. Great. <laughs> All right, I'll fix that and we'll be done for today. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later.